After this past year, I think everyone can agree that times are changing. Who knows if it will ever be socially acceptable to shake hands when meeting someone new, share an Uber, go into a public space where your smile can be seen, or have a trade show where people are actually walking around. The same is true for our industry. The last year has changed in ways we could have never foreseen. There are fewer people for, per shift in the plants and fewer shifts altogether. Our equipment is doing double duty, handling a wider variety of products. All this is occurring at the same time that there's a need to increase production and expand the variety of blends to match customers' requests. The days of manufacturing companies making a product and then marketing it to the consumer are long gone. Today's savvy consumer demands a more tailored product to their needs, and they want it to arrive soon after they hit the submit button. Yes, it is true, times are changing. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. My name is Chambray Starr. I'm a regional sales manager in the USA for MatCon. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing with you an alternative way to formulate, blend, pack, and clean that will ultimately give you greater flexibility and increase your production capacity. A few weeks ago, I was ventured out to my local grocery store. What would normally have been a quick errand more than double because of all the protocols we now have to adhere to. I was masked up, had freshly washed hands, took care in sanitizing my cart, and of course, I maintained the minimum six foot distance between me and the other shoppers. No list, as I only needed a couple of items. Repeating in my head, milk, lettuce, and crackers, milk, lettuce, and crackers. As I stared at the 25 foot long section of boxed and bagged wafers, I started to wonder about what kind of crackers would the new neighbors like to go with the dip I'm dropping off to welcome them to the neighborhood? Regular, butter flavor, round, square, rectangle. I wonder if they have dietary restrictions. Should I get the low sodium? And then there's gluten allergies. Holy cow, how come I never noticed that there were this many types of crackers to choose from? Okay, I'm just grabbing one of each. After all, you can only make a first impression once, right? As evidenced by my recent trip to the grocery store, the voice of the customer is being heard loud and clear. There are lots of options for them to choose from on the supermarket shelves. During the shift towards a consumer-driven market, the need for variety has emerged. This shows up as made-to-order products, offering a range of flavors and taking into consideration vegan and allergen choices. These consumers create an increasing pressure on manufacturers of these products and all of the supply chain involved in the end product. There are thousands of raw materials and hundreds of SKUs involved in the food industry alone. In the world of vegan, gluten-free, and allergen products, the stakes are becoming more challenging and are under closer scrutiny than ever before from retailer audits and other governing bodies. In this industry, eliminating cross-contamination is the biggest challenge to food manufacturers. Allergen carryover levels are a key concern and faulty batches and labeling can have a devastating effect on a company's integrity and reputation. And this is only referencing the food industry. We all know that in the chemical, mineral, or battery market, the range of products are limitless. Likewise, in the pharmaceutical sector, the attention to detail, product quality, and having repeatable and validatable processes are of vital importance. The consumer's demand for variety is impacting all industries. So let's return to the grocery example and go old school for a bit. Talk about the conventional way of blending products. A traditional fixed mixer, such as a ribbon blender, paddle mixer, or V-blenders, have been the blending staple. If I'm being honest, this conventional mixing process works just fine when you're making the same product over and over again. When recipe changes are few and far between, and when the need to do a full clean out is kept to a minimum. I'm sure you're also thinking that these conventional systems also work because mixing times are lower and you have the option of adding liquids, right? Let me ask you this. What are some of the issues that you encounter with your conventional mixing process? We try and set up our campaigns so we can limit the amount of cleaning, but it doesn't always work out. The amount of time spent cleaning and changing over to a new recipe is sometimes a big chunk of our shift and its impacts on our daily production. We have all of those issues too. 
But it's frustrating when we have one of our biggest customers that needs an order filled immediately, and we have to drop everything, clean out the entire system, and then switch over to handle it. Oh, very good points. You guys just made my case. All of those situations are ones that we hear every day. A coupled process poses all of these potential issues and more. Recipe changes, made to order requests, cleaning and downtime are some of the biggest challenges that our industry faces in a coupled or conventional mixing system. A coupled conventional mixing process uses the mixer as an expensive and glorified hopper during the filling process and during the packaging process. Steps are taking place, there can be no functions happening in parallel. Formulation, blending, and cleaning are non-existent when the packaging step is going on. We know that in an effort to streamline your coupled processes and reduce downtime with your conventional mixers, you follow a few different approaches. One of them is manufacturing by campaigns, typically from light to dark, but there are a few items to consider with this approach. The cost of product you have not cost of storage of already blended product that isn't needed immediately, and the risk of damage to stock and of it going out of date. We also see the use of a dedicated system, which as I mentioned earlier, this old school approach is a viable option when it's the same product every day, all day. The issues associated with this approach are additional capital costs and space needed for equipment and buildings, additional overheads, including labor and utilities, Plus, you run the risk of poor utilization of assets, both in equipment and labor. Both of these approaches still require one time-consuming, production-stifling function. You still need to clean. You flush the processes with flour or salt or any flushing agent, but you can't be sure you have removed all con cross-contaminants, can you? Do you need to wet clean parts of the process? Do you have difficulty accessing all of the components? How do you ensure the processes are dry after wet cleaning? And what does the dry time look like? There's no doubt it's labor intensive. And I will mention again, it's time consuming. It's difficult to validate. And all the while you're hard at work cleaning, you're not producing one revenue generating product. So just to recap, some of the disadvantages to the conventional coupled mixer system are downtime and loss in production, labor intensive cleaning, cleaning validation, health and safety issues around cleaning, cross contamination risks, aggressive mixing of delicate products, high inventory levels and cost to store them, and just the plain old inefficiencies of a coupled system. So now let's get to the good stuff. An alternative approach to dealing with these challenges found in the conventional coupled mixing is to decouple the process and get each manufacturing process step working independently and at the same time. This is done by using IBCs to create what we call a parallel processing environment where... Isn't an IBC just a fancy name for tote or bin? What do you mean parallel processing as opposed to perpendicular processing? Well, yes, and most definitely no. Let me explain. Yes, an IBC or intermediate bulk container can also be called a tote, hopper, bin, or rigid container. These IBCs are manufactured to different standards with some having the advantages of rounded corners and a hygienic design. All of the IBC manufacturers have different valves to discharge the product. These can include butterfly valves, slide gates, cone lifts, or cone valves. By introducing an IBC, you are decoupling the fixed transfer system and creating flexibility. Decoupling each of the process steps, which are formulation, blending, packing, and cleaning, allows each step to operate independently within the process. This is a concept we call parallel processing. This provides tremendous flexibility when producing high variation product portfolios, which is a fancy way of saying this type of system shines when you need to be able to have recipe changes. An IBC allows for different recipes to be handled at each of the process steps for formulating, blending, packing, and cleaning in a contained, dust-free, and traceable way. Downtime is kept to minimum by using offline cleaning of the IBC, while other IBCs can still be moving throughout the process steps. Using single-minute exchange of dye principles that are taken from lean manufacturing practices in the automotive industry, 
because there are no product contact points on the blender, IBCs can be changed out immediately, blend after blend. Finally, change out parts and formulation or packing are used to replace contaminated product contact surfaces with clean parts in the shortest possible time. We've already talked about how a traditional fix system uses the mixer as a hopper during filling, then blends the powder, and then once again imitates a hopper during the discharge and packaging process. Using this coupled system, you cannot start producing the next batch until the previous batch has been fully discharged and packed. In this animation, I'd like to run through a typical MatCon system of parallel process that handles flavored powders. As previously mentioned, we start the MATCON system with formulating or directly filling the IBC. We're gonna allocate 30 minutes for purposes of this animation. Blending comes next. We're figuring about 20 minutes from bringing the IBC to the blender until the IBC is placed on the discharge station in packing. For packing, the timing is based on the packaging equipment, truly. But let's hear on the conservative side and allow an hour. After the IBC is discharged, it then moves on to cleaning. There are several options, including a dry cleaning of about 15 minutes to a full wet wash that would be clean, dried, and ready to reintroduce to the process in 30 minutes time frame. So now let's take our IBCs through this process. We'll start the MatCon system with our first batch of strawberry powder being formulated. While the strawberry IBC moves on to blending, the batch of vanilla powder can begin the process of being formulated. As the strawberry IBC heads over to packing, vanilla takes its place in blending and behind it, there begins a new formulation in an IBC of chocolate powder and so on and so on. Using these times for the parallel processing system, four batches completed in about an hour and 50 minutes. Cleaning either wet or dry can be done offline as needed without shutting down the entire production line as you would with a traditional fixed mixer system. If an allergen recipe is needed in the production process, it can easily be handled by the MatCon system with quick change out parts that be, can be cleaned independent of the process. The ability to formulate, blend, pack, and clean in parallel gives a company flexibility and increases your production. Hold on, how can you blend more in an eight hour shift if you're blending smaller batches? that take longer to mix? The key, as I mentioned before, is the concept of parallel processing. The product is contained in the IBC throughout the processing and tumble blending, which means you don't need to clean the blender in between when you have recipe changes. The ability to blend batch after batch with no downtime for cleaning allows more batches to be in an eight hour shift. So what type of reduction in labor costs have you seen? So we have case studies that have shown a 25% reduction in labor since fewer operators are required to manage the IBC system. So you're saying you have less downtime with an IBC system? In that same case study, it previously took four operators three hours to clean each mixer, resulting in a 22% downtime. With the IBC system, though, it's now just 6% downtime for a 24-7 operation. Let's say I want to keep my existing mixer. Is there a way I can utilize the parallel processing approach anyway? Yeah, definitely. If you're looking to add flexibility or just trying to plan ahead for future market changes, decoupling your blending system is still a smart move. The benefit of using IBCs in your manufacturing process is that you're add the equipment in a modular way. Basically, you can start with a decoupled approach and add the Lego pieces you need to get to the point of a parallel processing system that independently supports formulation, blending, packing, and cleaning. Where does lean manufacturing come into play with an IBC system? A lean and decoupled process provides better overall equipment effectiveness from quick and independent changeovers. This process decreases inventory for improved utilization, reduces the cost per pound of manufactured product. And in many instances, one of the most attractive features of the decoupled lean system is that one tumble blender can replace three ribbon mixers in output while taking up just a fraction of that same floor space. Good news, everyone. I just got a notification that we can get a glimpse into one of our customers' facilities that handle powder for the food industry. Let's see how they're using the parallel processing system for greater flexibility and increasing production. So let's just follow the parallel processing flow through this plant, starting with formula. It all starts when the IBC is charged or filled. 
With this plant, they dump the bags into the IBC via the sack tip station that is located on the floor above the IBC. This can also be done by using a mezzanine or platform within the same room. The process of filling an IBC can also be fully automated if needed. For this customer, the next step in their decoupling process is tumble blending the materials. The blender can accept one IBC after another, is ready for any recipe as there are no product contact points in the blender. All the powders contained within the IBC. In addition, different batch sizes can be made using a variety of IBC sizes. Tumble blending has been proven to be an effective mixing methodology, but if you need more shear, then most tumble blenders have the option of a high shear blade that can be added, which re replicates a similar effect to that of a ribbon mixer, helps to disperse small inclusions and improve mixing time. Now that we've formulated and blended the IBC, the next stop for the IBC would be packaging. Different methods are used to discharge the material from the IBC into the packaging or the downstream process. These system manufacturers have their own means to discharge material, including butterfly valves, slide gates, cone lifts, and cone valves. The more advanced systems ensure that they can handle even the most challenging materials with poor flow characteristics. That's where you would want to pay attention to the type of valve that is in the IBC outlet. The cone valve based IBCs reduce or eliminate segregation altogether. IBCs are cleaned offline and can be done anytime really. It just depends on your process. There are a variety of ways to clean the IBCs offline, ranging from a manual wash to a completely automated system where you just place the IBC and push a button. The cleaning process can either be done by wet washing or by air. So I hope seeing a plant using the parallel processing system has helped to understand how this can be used to create flexibility in your plant and ensure future growth. So when I got back home from my grocery store outing with my five boxes of crackers for the new neighbors, I came up with a new question. How many crackers do they actually carry at the store? I went online to check. 68, 69, 67, constantly changes. Yes, more than 65 different crackers with a variety of flavors, shapes, some reduced fat, others reduced sodium, gluten-free, some toasted, some baked, and my personal favorite, cheese filled. Now that I know the number of crackers skews at just one store in the middle of the US. I'm curious as to the amount of time spent cleaning mixers throughout the supply chain of all of those. Well, at least the ones that haven't figured out the future is in parallel processing. So as we wrap up here, I wanna thank all of you for taking your valuable time to spend with us. I hope you take away some new information, or at least a new way of looking at your mixing process. In appreciation of your time, we're offering an ROI calculator for the mixing process to anyone who just wants to reach out to us. Simply input your current production values and it will output a tangible calculation that is tailored to your environment, will demonstrate how many more batches you might achieve with parallel processing. As I said before, indeed, the times are changing. Consumer demands are higher than they've ever been. The ability to adapt is one of the key indicators to success and decoupling your powder handling process helps drive that success. Utilizing lean manufacturing and the ability to have all of your processes taking place simultaneously increases production. Labor costs decrease due to needing fewer operators to run an IBC system, and downtime is reduced with the IBC cleaning taking place offline. Flexibility with IBCs in your powder process means as a consumer demands change, you can introduce new product lines to match. With IBCs, your system is modular and enables scalable growth potential. And with an ever evolving marketplace, your business will be future-proofed.